Let's see, I think this would be a better demonstration gun for what I'm gonna talk about right now. Now, can you make a long range shot by just holding the gun? So you just hold it, right? You really bring it into your shoulder, maybe have a vertical grip on it, you pull it in tightly. Can you make a long range shot that way? I'm at about 380 yards, let me try. Ipsic plate down there by the tractor. Oh, totally did it. Let me try it again. Did it twice, wow. Yeah, you can do it, but I have perfect conditions here. Like, I have no wind today. It's amazing. Calm. Temperature is about 80 degrees. I have a hay bale I'm shooting off of. That's helpful. I'm not huffing and puffing from having ran, so my heart rate is very calm right now. The answer is yeah. Guys can do it that are practiced with their gun, practice with the fundamentals of shooting. Another way you can do it, and you've seen this in Soldier Boy in the project, is you can just place your 30 round magazine into the ground, and we're on a hay bale once again, because it's much easier to film this on a hay bale, especially with all the weeds I have growing about three feet high. We couldn't even shoot prone out here. Can I just stab my 30 round magazine into the dirt, the snow, the mud, without inducing jams and get better stability. <sighs> Miss. Maybe I should go back to freehand. Oh, I, I know what I did. There it is. I, I'm using hash marks to hold over and I didn't hold over. Missed. Um, the answer is yes, you can. And I have instructed that here in the project with guys. You've seen that. Where our last Soldier Boy was that way in uh, 2023, out in the snow and the mud. Sean, the team here, and myself were uh, uh, teaching. I think the team here was Rod, and he came out, didn't have a bipod on. Shame on you. Should have one when you're doing TMP shooting games. And he was having difficulty, couldn't do it freehand, prone. He was kind of holding it up and it was rocking. I said, just put that 30 round mag right there and lay even flatter. And it worked out. He did get better stability and started making some really good hits. But here's the deal. If you just decide to use your magazine, it's not perfect because look at what we have. We have a rock back and forth. We have a rock side to side. Now we can minimize that by bringing that really grabbing our pistol grip. Maybe we have a VG on. I'm, I'm not gonna grab this, but let's say I had a VG on. I can bring it into my shoulder pocket and that will lock it down better. And what we're trying to do is just minimize wobbliness, right? And we wanna just suck it into our shoulder, but it's not ideal. If you're gonna make, I would say, probably shots beyond 100 yards even, I, I would recommend having a bipod option. And that's what I'm gonna call this video, the bipod option. Just have one with you, have it integrated into your LBE, have it in your backpack, maybe just in a BDU pocket or something, and try, it ha try to have it on the gun when you think you're gonna need it. A bipod just gives you a lot better stability, even an inexpensive one. And I do have some very inexpensive ones to talk about and recommend to you today. There's one I don't really like, and I'll say as much when I get to it. We're starting off then, I guess, with the AR-15. This is one of my builds. We have a Gym Tech Trek can on it. I just slapped this very high value Weaver Caspa scope on it basically a half hour ago, and I just did a rough zero. So it's not even zeroed in correctly for this load, 55 FMJ. Seems to be working good enough though. 
And so anyways, that's my build. I do put really good triggers in my ARs. I forget which one this is. It might just be a Rock River install that I did, I forget. But anyways, this is what we're gonna start up with is the UTG Shooters Bipod. So this sucker is very affordable. The one you're looking at is about 13 years old in the Nut and Fancy project. It was painted with Alumahide, I believe. That might be Duracoat on there, I honestly forget. But I have spray painted several of them with Alumahide from Brownells. And that's a really good coating if you don't know to fool around with like Duracoat or Cerakote. So this is not the best bipod in the world, far from it. It does give you great stability if you use it correctly. So it is, again, about 45 bucks. That's gonna be well less than some of these other bipods I'm gonna talk about. The adjustability on this thing is nine and a half to 11 and a half inches. It's made out of aluminum. It's three and a half inches wide, about eight inches overall length when it's compressed. Although with its pick mount, and I do have this on a pick rail, not an M lock, uh, you can see it sticks down from the handguard, well, prominently. The weight on it is decent. That's one reason I gravitated to this, not really because of the cost. It was one of the lighter bipods years ago. So it's about 11 ounces. Now the perfect bipod is one that gives you all types of shooting positions. It's one hand capable, so you don't have to use two hands to adjust it. It's very stable, it has some pan in it, has some tilt in it. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, pan is side to side, tilt is just what it sounds like, left and right. And some guys like that on their bipod because their terrain might be unforgiving and maybe they're tracking a moving target. Maybe just because where the target is, they need to you know, just have more variability in their bipod. Now the way the UTG is deployed is with these steel, I think they're steel, spring-loaded buttons and I've never had them fail on me in all these years. It locks down and you can, you can again see the height. It's a little bit on the long side for me. No, I'm not gonna do a that's what she said thing. Uh, I kinda wish it was a shorter bipod, especially since I'm shooting on the hay bale here. As a reminder, 9.5 to 11 and a half inches is what I measure it in the adjustability. And there might be some other variations of this one as well. A downside might be to adjust the legs, it's gonna take a little bit of doing. We're gonna unscrew the collars of the legs. They are spring-loaded, so this the leg will come out. Notice this, watch, like that. And then we can adjust it infinitely to whatever we want. Then we'd have to go to this side and adjust it there as well. There's no detents in the legs, which we all like, I think, in our bipods. This is an earlier model. I still don't think the shooter's bipod has that. But here's the upside. If you're not gonna adjust it, it is one hand. Uh, deployable and I have modeled that in multiple drills over the years sledgehammer did it a lot soldier boy did it a lot staff runs did it a lot I think even red skies I modeled this one uh, the stability is decent I like it it wiggles back a little bit I think again it folds and unfolds easily maybe a downside of this design is it has one big allen screw in the middle of it right here and I think it has an O-ring when you first get it and you wanna keep that pretty snug. Uh, and initially I had it locked down, then I've loosened it up so I have some type of pan capability, which you can see right here. So if I lock the bipod down, the gun can swivel, tracking a moving target. Uh, do you want to Loctite that screw? Uh, I do, and I use blue Loctite for sure. But experiment with it. You might be pleased with what you come up with. A couple shots. Sun setting right in my face. Hit. 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 Miss. Hit. Oh, yeah. Look how much easier it is using a bipod. Now, some of you guys watching this video will go, well, duh, of course a bipod's better. But again, I'm telling you experientially what I've seen in the project is guys don't run them. They come out, they get tagged for Soldier Boy, and they're not integrating them. And I kind of make fun of them for it. 
so does the staff. We're like, dude, where's your pie pod? And they struggle at long ranges. Like we've been pushing guys out to around 500 yards with their AR. They are struggling. Now we did have one, one dude one year who was really experienced long range shooter. He did quite well uh, at that range. I think we we're shooting in high snow conditions, high wind, but he had a bipod and he was making really good hits. The one guy. Okay, so UTG, $45, easy to stow, easy to use. The, the tactical elitists will hate this bipod. I'm just telling you, they will hate it. They'll go, this thing is crappy. I'd never put it on my gun. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's the best go to war option, but having used them pretty hard, I'll give my recommendation on the UTG. It's pretty excellent. They're recommended. And they're only 45 bucks. Use my links, taking you to Pro 2A Optics Planet, if you would, please. Thank you very much. Next up in the project is one called the Limb Saver True Rack. I'm sorry, True Track 6.6 .6 ounce bipod. I've had this one for about two and a half years. I've shot off of it quite a bit. There are things I really like about it and things I don't like so much. The price is pretty good, $45 to about $50 on this very lightweight polymer and fiberglass limb saver true track bipod i'll say that again 6.6 .6 ounces now this might be a good option to just have a bipod maybe it's not your primary way of shooting but you have it and you've integrated it into your lbe they come in black fde they have a pick rail uh, m lock or stud mount option this is a stud mount variation now, it has some disadvantages. Let me tell you about one right here. It's really more of a hunting bipod, not a tactical bipod. And by that, I mean a tactical bipod is something you can deploy very quickly. Just come here, click, click, just like that UTG. You saw how quick I got into action. This one, when it's stowed, I have a screw right here, a steel serrated screw that I have to unscrew right here. And then I have to unclip the legs, clip, they clip firmly. Then I have to seat it, and then I'm gonna screw the screw down. And by the way, the way it goes into your swivel stud is with a stainless steel cross pin. And you gotta make sure that's all the way through your swivel stud and make sure that this tightening screw right here is solid. Okay, now I know most of you guys, I bet you're not running a swivel stud mount. Uh, maybe some of y'all are, I don't know. I still have them on my gun, like this Ruger Predator, outstanding 223 bolt action rifle, magazine fed, which is even better. Yeah, I still run them. They're simple, they don't add a lot of weight. I don't need a handguard on this gun, so yeah, I still use them. But now the Limb Saver bipod is deployed and ready for use. But you can see that was a multi step process, not super fast. Now, here's the legs right here. These are actually fiberglass, and we have another screw that we're gonna loosen. And then just like the UGG, we have infinite levels of adjustment, but we don't have any detents in the legs. Okay, so that's unfortunate. For this shoot, I'm just gonna keep them fully compressed and did I write down the adjustment range on this thing? Nope, that's not it. Seven to 11 inches on this one. By the way, I do like these fiberglass legs. They're pretty cool and they have rubber feet on them that will lock onto a whole bunch of different surfaces, including this hay bale, dirt, rock, shooting bench even. And then the other part of it is polymer. That's why it's so lightweight. So you don't have hardly any metal in the limb saver bipod. That's why I think it's still worth your consideration. It's definitely the lightest one I'm shooting off of today. Okay, now there's no pan or tilt on this thing, which again might disappoint now when I get on the hay bale here you can see I do have some movement side to side and let's see if I can pan with it yes I can that's all good so a little more flexibility in this very lightweight cost-effective bipod than you would think time for shooting am I loaded probably not nope Ooh, that sun is brutal. Hit. 
Would I buy a limb saver bipod? Hit. Absolutely I would. It's a recommended bipod. Again, not the most versatile, not the strongest, not the coolest, but it, damn, it works. Obviously you're seeing it right here. This high right. Shooting a different load out of this and it's zeroed for. So this is actually a varmint gun for me. It's zeroed for, I think right now, 68 grain match rounds. I'm shooting 55s out of it. Ooh, that sun is brutal. I'm trying, let me move the camera. This will help me. Because what I'm trying to do is get the muzzle in the frame. But I need to get my elbow wet, laying down. Ah, that's better. There we go. Because now I have three points. I've got the bipod legs. Then I've got my fists. Way better. And it pays off with a hit. Man, I love this gun. Ruger Predators are awesome. All their Ruger American rifles are good. Another hit. So there you go. And to stow them, we're gonna put the legs together on the limb saver. We'll clip them. They clip firmly, but now we gotta go through that silliness of this screw. Just a couple turns and then a couple turns here. So it's relatively quick. The good news is once it's stowed, it's stowed. Assuming you have it locked onto your swivel stud properly, but it stows pretty good. Uh, I think these are cool. They come in, again, flat desert earth and black. Around 45 bucks, 50 bucks recommended. Yeah, totally recommended. Uh, let me change over some bipods and we'll continue. By the way, here's my ballistics table on the Ruger Predator. When I'm getting serious, I always slap one of these on my guns. So I'll just run it through my ballistics program, print it out, tape it on. I think it's 68 grain frontier boat tail is what I have it zeroed for. Doing pretty good though with this uh, rough zero on the 55s. Now it's time to talk about probably my least favorite bipod in this particular group. The Caldwell AR bipod, I believe is what it's called. Again, I've had this one forever, probably over a decade. It's a low cost bipod around $50. They sold it to AR shooters in the day. I was attracted to it by its lower weight, 10.5 ounces, that's pretty darn good. And the rest is kind of similar to that UTG. You can see the barrel of the leg is about the same. It's machined aluminum. The pivot is the same, so it's just spring held. There's no button I have to push to bring the legs back and forth. That's actually pretty good. I don't mind that. And it has infinite adjustment, 9 inches to 13 inches in this particular variation of the Caldwell AR bipod. They might call it the shooting bipod too. There's no spring tension in these legs like the UTG has. So once you find your height, you just rotate your aluminum collar and it does lock in pretty good. I find that you have to crank it down pretty, pretty hard to make sure it doesn't collapse. See how it's kind of collapsing? That's one of the things I don't like about this one. Those other ones like the UTG, if you crank them, they will not collapse on you. This one, it seems like I have to really, really crank it and it's still kind of collapsing in. Okay, so that's the first negative about this bipod. The second one is this. Look at the spring tilt in this thing. It goes back and forth, and I think their idea is to give you, well, variability for you know rough terrain. That's what they're, they're trying to give you. But then it also rotates to give you some panning capability. What I find is that it's just kind of a wobbly affair this particular Caldwell bipod, and I would not buy it again. Even though it's lightweight, even though it's cost effective, even though it's toolless mount on your swivel stud, see how that worked? So it has a nice big rotating nut that goes on the swivel stud, and it does come with a Picatinny rail adapter, but it's kind of heavy at like two and a half ounces. 
and I've probably lost it at this point. So, but it can adapt to your AR if you want it. Now, it's not a total fail, it's not. It still gives you some stability. It's not horrible. It just doesn't, you know, it doesn't have the features of all those other ones that we've been talking about. Holy cow, that sun is bright. Hat bill down. Wish me luck. Hit. Man, I love shooting bolt action guns. They're so fun. Your ammo lasts longer too. I like that a lot. Hit. So see this side to side. It's just not as stable as the other bipods. Now I'm not gonna throw it in the garbage. It still has some utility, but I think the other ones I'm showing you just give you a lot better performance. I especially don't like the left and right cant on it. There's no way I can lock it down. So I can't get rid of that. There's no knob I can twist. Those other ones like that last uh, Acumax tripod or bipod I could. Yeah, it's got a nice trigger on it. One more, one more. Let me talk about this really quick. Um, now, we talked about natural shooting positions, just shooting technique, stabbing the magazine down. I don't know if I could do it with this 20 rounder. It's not long enough to stab down. But another thing you could do is you could, well, have a shooting rest like this, right? So you could just carry that along. And for range activity, why not? Why not? You don't have to bipod up. If I'm just going to the range, why mess with a bipod and all that attendant hassle? I can just use uh, some bags. I don't have my rear bag, I should, but you'd bag up the front forend and bag up the back. And experiment, there's all kinds of different bags. I'll put some links down below to like these Caldwells. These are really good bags. And uh, you'd be amazed at how much stability you can get with one of these. You can adjust them too. Like that was too high, so now I'm gonna come turn it sideways and come down lower. <sighs> good breath control, good breathing control. Good trigger control. And safety off would help. Hit. But in a tactical environment, you're not gonna carry around bags, obviously. It. But I want to represent that because if you guys are just going to your local range, I think you'd be better off just to bag up in most situations. For instance, just, just me, for high accuracy shot at the range, if I just had a bipod in my hand versus a bag setup, I'll go with a bag setup every time. It's just me. So is that one recommended? The Caldwell AR bipod, no, it's not. Now, some of you guys are probably waiting to see if I'm gonna talk about the Atlas bipod. I don't have one of those. Sorry to disappoint. I think the world of Atlas bipods, they're just darn expensive. I'll put links below. They're highly recommended. They're about $220. I have shot with them before with air rifles, and they're very popular in competitive air rifle circles, the Atlas bipods. That's because they can go forward at a 45 degree angle, back at a 45 degree angle, and with a constant air pneumatic, like a pre-charged pneumatic, it really helps because sometimes your bottle's in the way. So a lot of versatility, uh, super high quality, they're, totally set up for, or I should say, um, suitable for firearms as well. Don't think of them as an air gun only bipod. The one I like is a five to nine inch adjustment. That's a shorter one. They might have a, a taller one as well. They do have pan and tilt built into them. I think up to 30 degrees total, 11 ounces The Atlas PCR, I'm sorry, PSR bipod. Recommended. I just don't have one right here. And then we'll end with this one right here, the Magpul bipod, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have and I bet love. This is probably the best overall bipod I'm shooting with today. 
Comes in M lock 1913 versions. Has an ARM 17S style attachment system version as well. It's not overly heavy for the amount of quality and sturdiness it has, 12 ounces for the Atlas bipod. Black, FDE, this one is an FDE. Those are polymer legs and it has stainless steel and aluminum components as well. This one will adjust 6.3 to 10.3 inches. Has 25 degrees of tilt each side, 20 degrees of pan each side. That's pretty dang good. Has Atlas pattern feet on it, so you can actually change the feet on it and put some Atlas bipod feet on if you want. It's relatively compact, maybe one of our more compact ones that I've talked about today. 2.3 inches in depth, about 3.3 inches wide, and you can see the overall length there compared to this AR Mag. That's a compact bipod. Is there anything I don't like about this? Uh, the cost, I think the cost actually for what you're getting is pretty decent. It's not outrageous. What is a, one of these run? Like uh, 105 bucks. So it's cheaper than a Harris bipod. One hand capable all day long. Here's your deployment button right here. Pop your legs down. Let's check out that pan. Oh yeah. Lots of moving target capability. Tilt. Yep. And let's see if we can lock that down with that rotational screw underneath. See, you're still going to have the tilt and pan, so it does not lock it down. I kind of wish it did. So if there's one thing perhaps I could improve on this is I would like the ability with the Magpul bipod to lock out my pan and tilt. So it's just a rigid platform. Now, maybe there's some information on how to do that. Maybe I'm missing something. If so, I apologize. But that's generally, I think, the way it comes out of box. Shooting time. And this one, I'm actually going to have to raise up a little bit. There we go. And there's those leg notches we talked about. Let me extend it all the way so you can see those. So only model I'm reviewing in field that has those. Real easy way to match your two bipod legs if you're on even terrain, if you're not, easy way to offset. And then there's your polymer button. All you do is up and down, easy breezy. I bet a lot of you guys have this one already, I bet you. in shadow right now. All hits, let's see, where did that one go? I can't see with the sun. It's gotta be there somewhere. There's one right there. Oh, that was a tractor. <laughs> there it is. And we are Winchester. Yeah, I really like this bipod a lot. Really like it. Is it my favorite of the group I'm shooting today? Mm, like I said, I wish I could lock it out completely. Um, it's up there. I really like the Harris a lot just because I have so much shooting experience with it. Let's see how this deploys and redeploys. See, it's kind of rotating right there a little bit. A little bit of hokiness there. Again, I'm using my offhand. And then we got this dynamic too. Is this a factor? Uh, and if, forgive me if I'm missing something. I mean, maybe one of you guys have a mod or something that I'm missing or something. Well, that, that is a factor because if you're running through brush and that twists, you can grab like brush and stuff. So yeah, that's a factor. Uh, but everything else is really good. It does require Tool applications, so you'll need a screwdriver to put it on your Picatinny rail. Again, this is a pick rail version. They have M-lock version as well if you want it. Uh, so once you got that done though, easy breezy. There's probably some QR mounts, quick release mounts if you wanted to add bulk and expense to your setup. 
I really like this bipod a lot. It's sick. I liked it. It comes in some cool colors too. Again, FD, one of my all-time favorite colors. Another benefit that you're seeing here on the hay bale is that it's short enough. Unlike those other ones, it gives me that really nice shooting height when I'm shooting on, well, a sit-up position shot. So maybe it's a uh, wall that I'm shooting on. Maybe it's uh, on top of a desk outside a window, but I'm not necessarily prone. I like the adjustability of this one. And I think the cost is reasonable. Uh, this thing is totally recommended. The Magpul Bipod, once again, Magpul giving us a great product for I think a reasonable cost. And technically one-handed, although I'm, I don't know if I'm uh, demoing that. Too great, too great. There you go, boys, five Bipod options, actually six because I talked about the Atlas. I think most of them are pretty darn good. Uh, do I run a Bipod? on my AR of choice, my GTW AR? The answer is no, it's not attached to the gun, but it is ready to go and it's gonna be in my LBE. If I'm going to a game, like a competition of some sort, a running drill of some sort, soldier boy, then I would have it attached to the gun and ready to go. But they cost so little to not have them is kind of foolish. There you go, nothing fancy. Another infield review, systems, tactical systems review. There's your thumbnail, by the way. Brought to you by donors of the Nut and Fancy Project. Thanks so much. We'll see you again. We got a lot more to go. The best days of TMP are still to come, believe it or not.